Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the uh, Medis team for the privilege of the floor. So I've been asked to talk about what do the number means. I have no disclosure. So as Thornton has said, when we measure TTFM, we measure, in fact, three numbers. First of all, we measure the mean graph flow. We measure the pulse atility index, the percentage of backwards flow, and the diastolic feeling. So I'm going to go through all these different numbers and try to understand what will um, make them uh, change depending on the different uh, scenarios. So first, let's look at the mean graph flow. So it's expressed in milliliter per minute. Uh, the flow curve, when you connect it to the EKG, has a systolic pink and diastolic blue component. Uh, the mean graph flow is influenced by the size and the quality of the conduit, and this is where it's crucial to um, adjust the size of the probe to the size of the graft. It has an impact uh, depending on the runoff, and I will give you some example. Of course, on the blood pressure, we talked about it. The blood pressure in an ideal scenario, the mean blood pressure should be above 80 millimeters of mercury. There is a significant impact on competitive flow and, of course, on the quality of the anastomosis. So uh, this is where you find it on the upper left part of your screen. And uh, I'm going to give you a few examples. So this is an example of a patient in whom I did multiple sequential grafting. Uh, and I want to um, focus on the fact that uh, you can definitely see the impact of your sequential grafting on your flow by placing bulldogs at different parts of the sequential grafting. So in this patient, what I did is I used the right mammary and I extended it with the left radial through the transverse sinus in order to bypass the ramus, the OM2, and OM3. So it's a non-touch aortic technique. The left mammary goes to the LID, and so the patient has an extension of the right mammary in the transverse sinus with the left uh, radial. So this is the flow uh, in the uh, right mammary. And as I said, the uh, TTFM has to be connected to the EKG. And in this case, of course, the nurse could not find the cable, so my apologize. But uh, the flow is fantastic, 128 millimeters per minute. PI is 1.3. Now, what I did is I lifted the heart, because I do 100% of my cases off pump, and I placed a bulldog just after the ramus artery. And you see that by placing the bulldog just after the ramus artery, so it means that you remove the second marginal and the third marginal from the flow. The flow goes from 128 to 43 millimeters. So there's no doubt that if you want to check the patency of your different anastomosis, you have to move the bulldog from in between anastomosis, one after the other, and then you will see your flow increase. And this reassures you in terms of um, uh, the quality of your anastomosis. So runoff is crucial. Another example, so in this case, the patient has a 60% LAD lesions and has severe uh, circumflex and RCA lesion. However, um, the FFR on this LAD is only 0.8, so it's a very borderline lesion, and I was expecting significant uh, competition flow. So uh, on the left side, this is uh, the, uh, an example of a high competition flow with a flow of only 22 ml per minute in the LAD. And as you can see, there is significant systolic backflow. Um, and uh, the test to do when you have this and you have uh, in mind that this is due to competition flow is to occlude the uh, LAD. And as soon as you occlude the LAD, the flow goes up from 22 to 38. So that's a trick that I often use, uh, and it's very easy to do it off pump because you snare the uh, proximal vessel often. Um, this shows you that you were right. It was just competition flow and not a problem at your anastomosis. Uh, another scenario is uh, like in this case, 
when you have occluded vessels, sometimes you think that the runoff is going to be poor because the vessel is occluded. But as you can see here, the left memory to LAD, the flow is 233 ml with a 1.7 of PA. So it's not because you have an occluded vessel with a very question mark uh, runoff that you will have a, a low flow. Uh, in this case, the flow was very high. So that's another example. So this is a patient with the left mammary to LAD. And then I wanted to show you when I squeeze the graft, you can see that you only have a systolic peak. So this, and when I release the graft, then you, you get back your, your uh, diastolic uh, part of the flow. So this is just to show that if you have a, a subocluded anastomosis, what you will see on your TTFM measurement is that you will lose your diastolic filling and you will only have a, syst a peak of systolic filling with a very high PI. So that's the thing that you should look at in case of um, doubt around the quality of the distal anastomosis. Other example, this is a, a study from Honda who looked at the impact of the uh, coronary stenosis and flow. And you can see that there is a significant difference between very significant FFR with an FFR below 0.7 and a FFR above 75. The flow goes from 24 to 16 ml. So there is a significant decrease. Uh, and then I often hear that uh, FFR in bypass surgery, there's no need of FFR. Uh, however, if you look at another uh, study that has looked at the visual inspection of the coronary stenosis, you see that the left mammary to LED flow is also significantly influenced by the degree of stenosis. So uh, whether you use a more advanced tool, FFR, or just eyeballing, you can predict in advance before doing the operation just by looking at the angiogram what will be the flow competition that you will have on your different distal targets. Now, uh, a question that we all often ask is, is there a difference between veins versus mammary in terms of graph flow? And this is a very interesting uh, study from 2020 where they looked at um, only the LAD uh, uh, targets. So they used veins for, I don't remember which reason, but significant amount of patient had a vein to the LAD uh, versus a right memory to the LAD versus a left memory to LAD. And as you can see, despite the fact that it's the LAD, the best target we have uh, with the largest runoff, the flow in the vein is significantly higher than the flow in the memory. However, the flow in the two memory, left memory or right memory to the LAD is equal. So this shows that whatever you do, if you use a vein, you will always have significantly higher flow than if you have an artery. The problem, as we all know with veins, is late attrition. The second thing that we will look at is the pulsatility index. So it's a calculated by dividing the difference between the peak flow and the minimum, minimum flow. Uh, it represents a resistance of uh, the graft, and it will vary depending on the graft, potential graft stenosis. It will vary uh, depending on the distal native coronary artery stenosis, vary depending on the competitive flow, and of course, the anastomosis quality. So uh, you can find it on the right side of your screen. And once again, this is the same patient with a very um, a small lesion on the LAD with an FFR of 0.8. Now, if you look just at the PI, you see that by occluding the left mam the uh, LAD, the PI without occlusion goes to uh, 3.2 to 1.8 with occlusion. And so this is another demonstration that it's not an anastomotic problem or a graft problem. It's just flow competition. Um, Carapatos have done the same uh, analysis just by eyeballing. So when you look at the percentage of stenosis that increased from 0 to 100% on the LAD, the PI significantly decreases. So a low PI is always a good news. Now, is there a difference on where you measure the PI? And uh, Torsten has uh, clearly expressed this. It's very important to measure the PI as distal as possible. As you can see, when you measure the, um, um, the flow in the proximal left mammary versus distal left mammary proximal to the anastomosis, there's no flow difference. 
However, there is a difference in the PI. So the closer to the anastomosis, the more accurate you are. The third measure is the percentage of backflow. It indicates flow competition between the graft and the native coronary artery. So this is crucial to, to look at if you think that you have competition flow. Uh, this is the uh, typical example. You have reverse flow, um, uh, the, so the, the graft goes below the line. And uh, Honda has uh, also looked at this, specifically looking at the FFR. You can see that when you have a significant lesion with an FFR uh, of less than 0.7, you only have 6.8% of systolic reverse flow. While if you have an FFR above 75, you go up to 28% of reverse flow. Uh, and uh, this is the, the difference. So in a good flow pattern, you have 93 ml with a low PI, no reverse flow. If you have a flow competition, the uh, flow is lower, uh, the PI is higher, and you have this image under the line. The diastolic filling is more pronounced in the left coronary system compared with the right coronary system. Uh, and you can find it on the upper right side of the uh, screen. So technical pitfalls, as Thornton have already uh, said, uh, I think the most important thing that we can do is to really fit the probe to the size of the graft. And if you do minimal invasive surgery, it's very useful to use these uh, flow probes without a handle. This allows you to go deep into uh, the thorax through a small incision. I often see my resident that are using not appropriate probes and then uh, of course the flow is significantly uh, uh, altered by this. Another thing that uh, uh, we've published in that circulation paper that Thorsten has shown you, these images are from uh, Toru Asai. So the objective is to have the probe perpendicular to the graft, and if you have the probe in the convexity of the graft, then you have an over, excuse me, an underestimation of the flow, and if you are in the concavity of the graft, then you can have a overestimation. So that's why it's always nice to measure the flow at multiple uh, time frame during the surgery, because this gives you a better interpretation of the real flow at the end. So the take-home message is that despite the fact that you get a number, you have to associate this number to the clinical setting and the angiogram in order to really understand what's going on. Do I have a, an, a technical issue at my anastomosis? Do I have competition flow? And sometimes by doing small uh, measures such as occluding the, the uh, native coronary artery, this can exclude competition flow. By increasing the blood pressure, you can also have a better idea of what's going on. But a number on its own doesn't mean anything. What you always have to do is take the number and interpret it with the clinical uh, setting of the patient and the uh, angiogram. I thank you for your attention.